legendary team Miss Pimimine. That was Josephine Baker right there. When you get to a certain age, you fade away sometimes. Right. You look at Cassius Clay and then you look at Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. and you see a big difference. Whoa. You're not as fast as you used to be, you understand? Uh -huh. I'm not sleeping on Hopkins. He's an old man, but just like Chess, he's a very strategic fighter. He'll look for weaknesses, and then he'll come in and attack, mm -hmm. and he'll destroy you. Winky, you don't have to come looking for him. He'll come to you. This fight is going to be a hard fight. <laughs> Check it out. For Bernard Hopkins and Winky Wright, boxing is a battle waged with the artistry of chess. The ring, a board where opponents are set up and then systematically taken apart. 108 fights, 98 victories, but the story begins long before that. Many years ago, an ex-con from the streets of North Philadelphia found redemption in the ring. His story is one of perseverance, of sacrifice, and of glory. After an 18-year career and a near-perfect finale. This is the last fight of his career. 42-year-old Bernard Hopkins has returned. Defying Father Time. And the solemn vow he once made to put an end to his fighting days. I'm not fighting because I have to. I'm fighting because I can. And everybody can't say that. Waiting across the canvas is a man who, after his own long and difficult journey, finally found his place among boxing's pound-for-pound -pound best. Now Winky Wright makes his statement. Who's next? Winky Wright, at age 35, is no young man himself, but promises to silence the executioner once and for all. He shouldn't have came out of a time and to fight Winky Wright. It's gonna be one of the worst decisions he's ever made. Two storied fighters, their hunger, their desire, similar their lifestyle and training worlds apart. When they meet in the ring July 21st, Bernard Hopkins and Winky Wright will try to outpunch, outmaneuver, outthink one another, and see what two old men can still do. Winky can only do one thing, but he's great at what he does. Mm -hmm. he, he defends and then he counterattacks. That's his style. Hopkins can fight inside, he can fight outside. He can dance like James Brown if he had to. To do what he can to survive. <laughs> this is the countdown to Hopkins' right. Part of every fighter lies a vital source of inspiration. For Bernard Hopkins, that person was always his late mother, Shirley. You know, her demeanor and, and strength and determination and all that is in me. And my mom's with me every day. In June of 2006 in Atlantic City, Hopkins entered the ring against favorite Antonio Tarver intent on fulfilling a promise to his mother to end his fighting days by his 41st birthday. We gonna whoop his ass and retire like no other man did. I thought it was perhaps the greatest walk away act in the history of the sport. Antonio Tarver was knocked down by Bernard Hopkins. Bernard, supposedly the smaller guy, is physically manhandling Antonio Tarver. What a performance by Hopkins. You have moved up unexpectedly from middleweight all the way to light heavyweight to take on the guy who was perceived at that moment to be the best light heavyweight in the world. And to annihilate him in the way that Bernard did, it was such a smacking statement. To me, it made all the sense in the world that that should be your farewell, particularly given that he had billed it as such for so long. Bernard Hawkins went out and did it his way and never come back as a fighter. And that's the statement that I'm gonna leave. Three days after the fight with Antonio Tarver, Bernard Hopkins was back in the gym. Right after the Tarver fight, he called me a couple of times and was telling me, you know, I missed two days in the gym, but I'm gonna make it up next week. And then finally I had to tell him and he kept calling me like that. I said, Bernard, you're retired. No matter how many days you miss in the gym. 
After months of consideration and a series of conversations with his family, Bernard Hopkins would end growing speculation and return to fight Winky Wright. Now, as he begins his first day of sparring, some question why the 42-year-old has come back for an encore. The Tarver win was the perfect place for him to hang up his gloves. It's like, Bernard, you beat Oscar De La Hoya, you made your $10 million, you promised your mother, why not call it quits? Because you had the intelligence to exceed at other things outside of boxing. I don't know why, he couldn't let it go. At the end of the day, Bernard has figured out a way to work that out in his mind so that everything is cool and mom's fine and there's no problem with him coming back to fight Winky Wright. No, I think she'd be telling me to stop and I don't think I'd be in front of you if she was alive. I don't think I'd be in front of you doing an interview because she would have convinced me and been on me every day not to box. And then I would have been like, okay, because it would have been to make her happy. And whether I would have been happy later on is another thing. Five seconds. It's the last time he boxed. I'm trying to think. Seven and a half months ago. With the Hopkins fight looming, training camp is also underway for Winky Wright. I'm going to tell you, that was good, man. Been ringing seven months. Good work. The last time Wright was in the ring, he easily prevailed against Ike Corte. Winky Wright trying to close the show for his fans. But it was his controversial fight a year ago with Jermaine Taylor, which has fueled his hunger. 114, 114. This bout is a draw. Apparently, Winky Wright wants to argue with the draw because he's upset and has left the ring. I think that even the greatest sportsmen, you know, are entitled emotionally to feel whatever they feel after a fight. I think Winky showed more passion and emotion in walking out of the ring without being interviewed than he usually does in the ring when he's fighting, in which it's all craft and calculation. It was Wright's decision to play the 12th round conservatively, presuming he had the fight won, that many say was his doom. Connect percentage is going way down as Winky tries to put it in the deep freeze. I think he just gave Taylor the 12th round. To Team Wright, the round should have made no difference at all. I brought the fight to Jermaine. We fought. You know, I beat him. You can see it on his face. I know what I did. I know I went in there, I, I, I took the fight to him, I, I hurt him, I backed him up the whole fight, I scored more punches than he did, I threw more punches than he did. Where did you see a draw? I, I didn't see a draw. Everybody in the world that we talk to tells us we won the fight. Everybody. And it was disheartening, but, you know, we put that in another page and then we move on. It doesn't surprise me that Dan Birmingham and Winky Wright would say that there's no question that he won the Taylor fight. Their argument is easy to see. On the other hand, if you look at Winky's face at the end of the fight, he's never been punished like that before. You gotta fight with your fucking heart fight. now, let's go. Uh, he's never taken that much abuse in a fight. And that's because the punches that Taylor landed did damage, he's a harder hitter. So I, I think a draw was a good call there. Wright is a fighter familiar with disappointment. It's taken him 33 years, plus victories over Mosley and Trinidad, to earn a place in boxing spotlight. Now, he hopes his performance against a bigger, stronger Bernard Hopkins will build on his reputation as one of the sport's pound-for-pound -pound best. Well, you know, sometimes you got to take the hard path to get to where you at today and to respect where you at today, you know, because if you earn it, nobody can't take it away from you. When you go into a fight where there's a chance that you can lose and people think it's a chance you can lose, that's the fight that gets you up, pick you up, and drive you to be the best that you can be. First day. Seven months in the ring. Got a lot more to go. Mm -hmm. The difference between me and the difference between 90% of the fighters, they look at this as being like a sport of winning and losing. I look at it like this. This is war. It might come down to your life or mine, and better yours than mine. Bernard is beyond uh, just a boxer. He's beyond a prize fighter. He's beyond a fighter. I think at his innermost core, the, the man's a predator. Here's a guy, literally, I think if you cut some of the cages open at the Philadelphia Zoo, he would literally fight some of those animals because he needs that challenge. But I know 
that someday I have armed myself with the strong sense of knowing that no matter what happens, I cannot fool, I cannot bend. And that came from that simple place to pay attention. Trouble no more. After spending his teenage years in and out of juvenile detention centers, Bernard Hopkins was sent to Greaterford State Penitentiary at the age of 17 on charges of strong arm robbery. During the 56 months he spent there, the boxing ring became the source of an improbable transformation and an unlikely dream. When he was in prison, he used to get up in the morning, run the yard the whole time when he used to tell everybody that he was going to become champ one day. He seen a vision. He came out, he just stuck to the gym, and he was more focused. Ever since he came home, he said he's going to be a champion. <laughs> you got to understand, and I try to tell people over and over, boxing was the only chip that I had left to bank on, so I couldn't miss. Now as he prepares to fight Winky Wright, Bernard Hopkins continues his tradition of holding the first part of training camp in Philadelphia staying close to the streets and people who helped shape him. Hey, buddy. All right. It's a police officer, Jake. Scraped my butt a couple of years ago, but he all right. Thank you very much. In Philly, Bernard loves to go in the neighborhood. He can hang out in any neighborhood. And he still go inside his neighborhood. He hangs out by himself. Come here, man. How your mom doing? The reason I come around is just because I haven't lost the touch of reality, and the reality is here. <laughs> you got a teenager? Yeah, 16, going on 17. I understand that this is part of what, I guess, moved me to be who I am today. It's going to be 10 and 0 versus off balls, right? Exactly. 10 and 0. 10 and 0. 10 and 0. 10 and 0. See, this is my man here. He understands that play. I'm 9 and 0 90. with soft balls. 9-0 with seven knockouts with softballs. I have no problem fighting the softball. So he understands when I fight Winky July 21st, he never been knocked out before. He got a great defense. We, we respect all that. But at the end of the day, Winky going to be on the nearest milk carton after July 21st. Oh, he's going to be missing. Twinkie. Twinkie. Where the Twinkies at? <laughs> While Bernard Hopkins may be linked with the mean streets of Philadelphia, Ronald Winky Wright is entwined with St. Petersburg, Florida, where he first started boxing and still lives today. But he's found a home away from home during training camp. Winky waited a long time to be a star. So you cannot blame that part of Winky Wright, which wants to enjoy his star status and notoriety. After all, he's the one who had to sit in the shadows and wait while other guys enjoyed it for a long time. And what's the best place in America to enjoy your public status? Las Vegas. When you're the man in Vegas, baby, you got to stay busy. Vegas. Vegas. We like him. He just yeah, going to get beat up. Personal. It's nothing personal. It's just at his retirement time. That's all. There you go. <laughs> We got respect for our elders. <laughs> and we got respect for the elders. <laughs> what up, Matt? I got the OJs here on the phone. They want to know when is your fight? Uh, July 21st. The OJ, the singer, OJ? Yeah. yeah. Hello? You definitely, man. Come out, because you ain't going to want to miss this. It's going to be a throwback. Go back to the old days like y'all. You know what I mean? It's going to be a throwback, baby. I love Vegas. Vegas been treating me good, and a lot of people love me in Vegas. That's a bad man right there. That's a bad man. When I train, I don't like to go out and be secluded. Some fighters like to go like the Big Bear, where it's nothing. You know, I go crazy up there. You know, I, I'm a people person. I got to be around people. I got to interact with people. I bought a lot of these lights and all that. You know what I mean? I, I own part of Manley Bay, you know. They want a lot of my money here. You know, he loves the casinos. Everybody would say, oh, how can you do that as a trainer? Let your fighter come out here to Vegas to train. But you have seen the results. We beat Mosley twice. We had an easy time with Trinidad, Ike Corte. I mean, just go down the list. And on July 21st, you'll see Winky put Bernard Hopkins on his resume. 
Though Wright loves the Vegas Strip, he trains and lives nine miles away with his surrogate family. His trainer, Dan Birmingham, strength coach, Daryl Hudson, and advisor, Damian Ramirez. 20. Ba -ba. You lost, son. We all get along like family. We never argue or fight. We respect each other's job, and we let each other do their job. And then we can keep an eye on Wink, collectively. So for us, it's worked. <laughs> this is why you don't get him. Because, look, you get real upset. But it's Wright's real family where he finds his inspiration. <laughs> That's my big baby right here. Midway through training camp, Wright welcomes a visit from his children, Raven and Romello. Wink's kids are really his real life. I mean, his family is, uh, you know, he puts his family first. Go down that way, and I'll meet you. That's a big part of his motivation. His son is sitting in the front row right there screaming, go get him, Dad, go get him. And um, a lot of times, I think when we're practicing, he's imagining that. You know what I mean? He's really driven by the support he gets from his family. When he looks at them, he sees success. I have to succeed. There's no going backwards. There's no saying, no, I can't do this. It was definitely nice to have my kids come out while I'm training, you know what I mean? You know, when you get away from your family, you miss them. And, you know, to have my kids come, it, it give me a little more inspiration and go out here and do what I got to do. Morning in Los Angeles, and legendary trainer Freddie Roach begins his daily commute to work. I don't have a job, really. I just hang out at this boxing gym and train people, but it's not work to me. Sweet and low. And why do we call you sweet and low? Because I'm not quite Sugar Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in my household, you just had a box. In my backyard, I didn't have a swing set. I had a box on. When I was 18, I turned pro, and you know I thought I was going to be world champion, but I just came up a little bit short. But if I had done that, though, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. Today, Roach begins training Bernard Hopkins for the first time. Hopkins shifted camp from Philadelphia after his longtime cornerman, Nazim Richardson, suffered an unexpected setback. Nazim had a stroke, so he's, um, he's doing better. By fight time, he might be well enough to even just come to the fight, but he's not capable of working the corner or anything like that. Me and Bernard have known each other for a long time, and uh, he's always respected what I do. So he asked me if I get him ready for the fight. I didn't look for a trainer when Nazim got ill. What drew me to Freddie was more of a respect of, uh, amongst two people. Freddie has that personality and the talent and the skills. That's when you know you got a teacher. A little head fan in, in, in between, nice, nice and loose, no effort at all, right? Just stay real relaxed, nice moves. All right, loose, be loose. To defeat Wright, Hopkins and Roach are banking on their years of combined ring knowledge to make up for their brief six weeks they have together. We're getting to know each other as each day goes on. And uh, if I do my job correctly and come up with the right strategy, we work on it for the, for the next month and a half, I think it'll be enough. Winky Wright, he's got that southpaw style. He's very defensive. But I know there's ways to crack that defense. And Bernard's the perfect guy to do it. He knows how to control the ring. He offsets the southpaw with just his movement alone. You don't really know where he's punching from. He's always off angle when he fires shots. And I don't think that Winky's going to realize how strong he is until they step in the ring that night. Winky wants you to come down mentally and physically to his level. And if he can bore you to death, he's going to beat you. He is not going to dictate to me how this fight's going to be. This fight's going to be at my pace. He's going to fight the way I want him to fight. Four minutes, Violet. That's it. Pump it. Don't flick it. Pump it. Pump it. That's it. That'll stop him in his tracks right there. Winky Wright has been working with Dan Birmingham since the day he first laced up a pair of boxing gloves 20 years ago. 
Diego. A pyre on his nose. We just keep each other hungry, you know what I mean? Me and Dan been, he been my trainer ever since I started. You know, we won together and we lost together, you know what I mean? He gonna be with me to the end. Together, they formed a unique partnership and a training formula that's tried and true. That's it, that's it. I think the advantage that Wink and I have is we can read each other, sometimes just by looking at each other and not even talking. I don't really have to elaborate on a lot of things. I can just say a few words, and then he gets the message. He's got to know that we mean business. That's it. I'm not losing this old motherfucker. The pain doesn't scare him. The pain only makes him feel like, I'm going to be better when that night comes. It's all going to pay off. He looks for the reward through the pain. That's it. Let me see, what, what you're doing is you're bouncing up, then you're settling down and you're punching. You yes, gotta sir. break it up a little bit, yeah. Gotcha. Break it up a little bit. We gotta be tricky with this old fuck. Despite fighting at a weight 10 pounds heavier than he's ever fought at, Wright must still lose several pounds to get to the 170 pound catch weight. Wink walks around 190 pounds. He loves Krispy Kreme donuts. He loves Domino's pizza. And in between time, that's what he does. He eats. So we have the weight to work off. Wink is a little bigger guy than people think. And Bernard is going to find out in this fight, in the first round, how strong Winky really is. Go. Daryl Hudson helps Birmingham bring Wright to his fighting weight through a combination of strength training One minute. and nutrition. But like Birmingham, he's well aware of Wright's weakness. The glaze just come right strong. off of oh, Make you want to slap your mom. Oh, that's a bad habit. <laughs> this is just how we reward him for working hard. You're only gonna get a lick. That's a bad <laughs> habit. I don't know who's worse. I, I hear Charles Barkley has a bad Krispy Kreme uh, habit, but on. wink. Kreme, we have to speed by Krispy Kreme. Oh, this one right here, hot. Oh, God. <laughs> one time is one time over. Oh, man. Our camp has always been a, uh, a nonchalant, uh, come, come as you are kind of camp. We, keep, we don't lock them down. You couldn't anyway. I mean, we can advise them, stay home, Wink, eat this, Wink. But Wink's going to do what Wink's going to do. Work hard, play hard. A motto Wright has always followed and will continue to until the fight takes place on July 21st. Y'all ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. As the fight draws near, Winky Wright welcomes an unlikely supporter to camp. Oh, my Winky. Former foe Felix Trinidad. Tito! A man who's been in the ring with both he and Hopkins. Tito Trinidad, you know, once I beat him, you know, we, we became friends. And for this guy to, you know, show me the respect that he showed me after the fight, it, it was great. See what I did to Trinidad? What could Trinidad tell him that he didn't do in 12 rounds and got knocked out? I'm going to just use a lot of jab, a lot of defense, work and moving. Here, I'm on the street. I get beat up by this guy around the corner, right? I go get the guy that he already beat up to help me. I mean, do that make sense to you? Hopkins and Wright share more than Trinidad in common. If these was my girlfriends, he got my seconds. So Winky has my seconds, and he thinks he's doing something. I already had them both. And it was pretty good. Jermaine got better lips, though. Jermaine, what left over? Jermaine beat you twice. What Jermaine got with me? <laughs> a, a swole eye and a whooping. This is one of those cases where comparative opponents seem to say this will be a close fight. <laughs> Bernard dominated Trinidad. So did Winky. Bernard had two very close to even fights against Jermaine Taylor, and Winky Wright had an even fight with Jermaine Taylor. These are two stubborn old men who both think basically that they've won all their fights. Nobody that we've seen has ever decisively beat Bernard Hopkins. Nobody that we've seen has ever decisively beat Winky Wright. So it's very hard to envision a fighter decisively beating either of these two. On July 21st, the countdown concludes, and Bernard Hopkins and Winky Wright begin the battle to preserve their boxing survival. If he loses a fight at this age, I can't see any reason why Bernard gets to fight again after this. I'm not sure if Winky fights again after this. You gotta understand, there's a lot riding on both of us to win. 
I want to go on. I must win to have that luxury of to go on. I definitely want to put him in retirement because he should have stayed. You know, he made his mom a promise. Now I'm going to make him make that promise again. When these two storied fighters enter the ring, promises will be broken as the ultimate game unfolds. You had two thinking fighters like this who were very methodical, very systematic, very scientific. You have a chess match. Winky's pawn is his jab. He moves that pawn forward as early in the fight as he can. And he sticks the jab in Trinidad's face. One, two, three, four more times. Bernard uses his pawns in a defensive fashion. They're there for fodder and to set you up. Hard right hand by Hopkins. Set it up perfectly with the left. And neither fighter has ever sacrificed a queen in the whole history of their careers. History will be rewritten. What is that? Winky Wright for the first time, late in his career, get knocked out by the executioner. Like he said, he gonna knock me out, so let's, he gonna have to bring the fight to me. Let's do it. Hard left hand lands for right, straight down the pipe. Big left hook for Hopkins, who will have the most down the stretch. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you, Mo, this fight is tough right there. And if I got to pick, I got to go with the young man. I got to go with Winky Ray, because for all the time, he catches up with all of us. It's too much at stake right now, and I think that um, Bernard Hopkins will definitely come out on top. Well, one's got youth over another one who's got age and wisdom, and whoever makes the first mistake is going to lose. Both of them is good. You wouldn't right. bet the rent money on them, Mo? I wouldn't bet a dime on it. <laughs> Let alone the rent.